So today is Military Monday, as you guys already know. Uh, we're going to start off from where we, we stopped last week, uh, in that same time frame, uh, that is. Um, and then at the very end of this video, I'll probably tell a very short, 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 short story about a time in Iraq where it's kind of like the same instance where I just got like either really lucky or basically just really lucky. Sometimes I better be lucky than skilled at something, certain things. All right, so before we get into this one, um, I had these shirts made because I like this saying. I don't know. I don't know what what really spurred me to start thinking about this, but this shirt right here, never fear anything. Like it's such a good shirt. And then on the back of it, it's got. I don't. Hopefully you guys can see that. But if you guys want to, if you guys want to support me in the channel, um, I'll link the shirts below. I this shirt is awesome, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it has a lot of meaning behind it. it like kind of goes back to the the the, the video that that I explained about the, um, the first time I killed somebody, that, that video, this basically is based around their shirt. The story that I'm about to tell you guys today is actually, this one, of any of the stories, this one probably bothers me the most for some reason. I don't really know if it's just what happened or it's just the most vivid story. And it wasn't like anything graphic that happened. It's just like maybe maybe what was going on. And when I mean like vivid, it's like I can remember every little tiny detail of this day. And it wasn't a very long portion but it was very very interesting I got very lucky me and another guy were very lucky to say the least okay so I'm gonna explain where we're sitting I'm sitting in that one tower I'll show you guys a picture right here and if you guys see you can see the wood line in front of you off to the left there's a, probably a building about 500 meters or so uh, there was actually a couple of buildings a couple of collots there and there's one right right in front of us probably about 100 meters right in front of 50 to 100 meters and that one's more like a water pump house I didn't use that for anything not that we knew of. And then off to the off to your right, you'll see there's this. This is this is before we put the dishka in the tower. This was like right before we put the dishka in the tower. This is dishka stories later on. I don't know why we put that in there? But off in the hills, it's probably about 1,500 meters away is when the mountain range starts. But and anything past that, I mean anything even close to that, it's like not even effective for anything. Like I'm not worried about. It. If they're shooting us from 1,500 meters away, I'll probably drink coffee and just watch them because they're not going to hit us. So. This is how the story starts. It was probably around noon. And if, you, if you've been in Afghanistan or any, any kind of area, I mean, most of the time you're using a fight in the morning or fight in the evening. There's no, like, a lot of times during the day it was not really the hot time unless you were going into a certain area. But, like, when you're just chilling, that's, like, your downtime. Like, that's mostly, that was our downtime was, was around the hours between, like, 10 and 3. Was, was, like, we never really got attacked during those. Times. So one of my guys, it was just we had one guy in the tower. Like, that's how, that's how non like chilled out everybody's down there working building the camp up like that's what we were doing I mean, i went up there to check and make sure he's not sleeping because we were like staying up like most of the night working and then throughout the day we we're working so you got to check on your dudes and make sure they're still awake in the tower because the tower is pretty pretty important but the guy that was up there uh he's he's been to iraq and afghanistan he's very he was very knowledgeable he's just very he just didn't care he was like one of those kind of guys he's very he's very knowledgeable and he just he just did not care he's just like you know what I don't care. I'm just gonna do my like that's that was his attitude. So we just basically sat in that tower, smoked cigarettes, and just watched. And I went up there to go check on him. I was probably up there about a minute or so, and I've been down working, uh, putting, filling sandbags, and everybody's on like fill sandbag duty. It doesn't matter your rank or anything. Everybody's filling sandbags. Everybody's digging holes. Everybody's doing something like getting this this camp up and prepped as fast. So I was wearing uh, Merrells, which just tennis shoes, and and took a couple of my, my MCU pants and cut them in the shorts and I was just wearing a brown t-shirt. And to be honest with you, I was wearing a Bass Pro Shop hat. That's exactly what I was wearing. I still have that hat to this day. I might actually bring that out in a video. But I was just, that's all I was wearing. I was just wearing it because we we're just working in the camp. I mean, you're gonna be comfortable. I remember one went up there and I went to go check on him and I was up there for about a minute. And we had a 240, I'll show you the picture again here. I had a, we had a 240. And then we had an Mark 48. So it was 240 facing this way, Mark 48 facing this way. We had two machine guns in the tower. And then we had a bunch of like your M4s and all the stuff. They would shoot this way. Because you, the trees and everything, like the most area they're going to come from is right here. So I was going up there. And all of a sudden we started taking, like I was like, seriously, I was up there for like a minute. I know I've said this again. I was up there for probably a minute. And all of a sudden he's sitting down. He like takes a seat. He sees me come down. And I'm the only one standing up. And we started taking the most like... The most insanely accurate fire that I have ever taken up to this date, right then, because they were they were probably 100 to 150 meters away in the wood line. You can't really see where they're coming from. Oh, you, can, you can't even really even see the muzzle flash, that they're like in the woods. And all of a sudden it's like And this is so close. So close that you can hear the crack of the gun and then hear the as it's going by you. The bolt set is, and, I'm, and I just remember, I went up and I grabbed, and I was sitting in front of the Mark 48. And on the Mark 48, there's a, 
when you grab the charging handle, and I had calluses, you know, on your hands. And when I grabbed it, it's got a little clip on it. And I grabbed it, and I pinched it, and it got a hold of my callus apparently, and it had ripped my skin off. And I didn't even know this because the adrenaline just like hit me, like, like, like right when you get into a firefight, the adrenaline that gets shoved into you is the most insane feeling. Like there's nothing in the world that compares to it. And I didn't even feel it, but it ripped all the skin all the way off all my finger at that time, and I hadn't realized it, but I racked it, and he just let, he said, Sergeant, what do I shoot? I said, just shoot, motherfucker. And and he, he just took, he hopped on that 240, and we're just fucking slanging 762 rounds, all in this wood line, all in this, and then it, then it goes from over here in this wood line to now they're shooting at us from over here. And now they're shooting like this, which isn't a, I mean, I feel I'm pretty comfortable, because they only have like a window, probably, probably about a three or four foot window to hit us as we're standing up, just shooting with these, with our machine guns and all of a sudden we hear thump, thump, and instantly I knew exactly what was about to happen. I didn't think it was gonna be this close, but this was the most, this, this, this is the part why, why I remember this story so well. But those mortar rounds, when they launched them, they, they had been probably in place and using like, trying to get them dialed. Like they, they were so dead on that they had us, they had us, line of sight was perfect. Their distance was off by like, I don't even know. I could have peed and hit the hole that the motor's rounded. And like, it was so close. But we're standing behind this wall, but these when these motor rounds hit, one hit, like, right here, and I just continued to shoot. And then instantly a second one hit, but they hit so close to where we were sitting that the concussion and the explosion, it blew dirt up onto the side of the wall and up into the tower where we were. And I just remember, this It sounds stupid, but I, I didn't, I don't know, I don't even know what the feeling is, but everything went in, like, like super slow-mo for like, it felt like forever, but it was probably like two or three seconds. I just remember going, doo, doo. it was like, doo, 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 that's, for some reason to me, like that's the, one of the most vivid memories I have from Afghanistan is, is that part is when those two mortar rounds landed like with, I, I don't even know, like to be honest with you, like we call danger close, like close, but this was like, like kill radius, this was like, if that wall wasn't there, we'd have been done. We'd been completely dead, like for sure. Cause just, I'm surprised we didn't get any crazy concussions from the just just the mortar rounds landing that close to us. I'll never forget the the the, the pressure, the feeling of that hit, all that dirt hitting you. But it was cool, um, cause we kept our cool. We continued to shoot. We did exactly what you're supposed to do. Just com continue fire. You're not. What are you gonna do? You have nowhere to go. You're in this little box. You're in your camp. Like you have nowhere else to go. So you just defend it. We just sat up there. We went through, I mean, in this picture you'll see, like I'll show, I've already shown it before, but there was two, probably 800 to 1,000 rounds linked right there. And I went through all those rounds um, and we weren't just shooting, like you don't shoot at the same time. Like I was shooting, but you know, I was at the point in my deployment where I just didn't give, I didn't care, you know. I, I was gonna let loose because I was gonna, I, I don't know. You just get to this mindset after being there for, for six or seven months, or five months or whatever it is. I just did not care one bit. And I shot all those rounds in five, five to 10 minutes or so, all of them. And at the time we had our medic, we always have somebody running ammo. Like when you get in a tick or a firefight and you're in this little tiny camp, somebody's gonna be your ammo runner. And somebody just takes up the job and the duty and that's what they do. But, oh, I forgot to mention, when, when they shot those motor rounds, um, instantly, like instantaneously, our motor, our guys that were running the motor pit, they got over and they started just, just lobbing rounds back at them, which kind of stopped the, the mortar rounds from shooting. They didn't shoot anymore. I think they shot maybe one more after that, but it was way off target. So the shooting from that was coming out from the east it was, was pretty heavy. And I don't even know where it was coming from. There's like a wood line way off in the distance. I wasn't even focused on that area. I was letting another tower deal with that. We were dealing with this one. And we were running out of ammo. And I remember I turned around and the medic, he was running and he was bringing uh, things of ammo up and he was throwing them up on top of the um, up to the tower to get down there. I reached down to pick up and I didn't even notice this at the time but I had like blood like everywhere like like what I mean everywhere it looked like a massacre in there it was weird but it was from when I peeled off and I didn't even feel it but it, you know you got so many blood blood vessels in your hands and I had blood all over my arms my legs like just everywhere and that's when he the doc instantly started freaking out I was like, oh my shit, have one of you guys been shot? I'm like, I don't think so. And I looked down and my hand is just covered in blood. It was just because I got pinched on that uh, Mark 48 when I pulled it back. Yeah. But 
So I remember, I remember I got off the tower. Um, I got I got switched out. We rotated out. We had enough guys at that point. The firefight started like coming down. Um, it was probably I'd say 15 to 20 minutes long. Um, and the first five to ten minutes was the most like like crazy because I remember everybody was running around like little ants trying to get up because you just don't know what they're trying to do. If they're trying to just kill you, if they're trying to actually overrun that camp, like I said earlier in, in, in a video from the other day, they, they had done that down there. And that was our biggest fear because we had like, like, when I mean little, little men on this camp, it was, we were, so like when, when they came at you, you made sure you looked bigger than what you really were. That, that, was, our, that was a big fear for us is, is getting overrun. That would, be, that would have been some shit. Anyway, I hop off the tower and he goes down I'm, and, I'm, and I just remember like, looking at my hands and the adrenaline, like I said at the beginning, I was like completely, like, I, I can't even fake it. Like I was like shaking like crazy. I looked down and he's like, you're such an idiot. How the hell did you do that? And anyway, I got patched up, went back. I remember seeing those, those craters that those, those mortar rounds had left and they, they literally just sat right there in front of the tower. And it was just like a reminder every day, like, holy shit. Me and this dude just were like, like feet away. If that wall wasn't there, we'd be done. We would have been toast, absolutely toast. So yeah. That was one day, and it's it's not really a long story, and that's why I'm going to tell you guys the, the Iraq story as well. But it's just the most, I have all the stories, like the one that's it's harder for me to tell is this one for some reason, than, than the one about me killing somebody. The one about killing somebody doesn't bother me. Like, that doesn't bother me, like, even a little bit in comparison to this one. For some reason, this one, like, like this one and the other one I'm about to tell you just always has bothered me for some reason. I don't really know. Maybe it's just the fact, that, that weird feeling of that slow motion, like, when you're, like the sound it's like I, I almost want to compare it to the word like when you know when you're in like a video game they make it like when you're shooting and a grenade goes off but that sounds dumb it's just I, mean, I, I don't know like, but you're shooting at the same rate of fire that's why I just that, that memory is so weird to me so anyway I'm, I'll go back to another ep episode or another, the next episode will actually be another Afghanistan one but I'll tell you guys an Iraq thing which is kind of weird because I'm following the whole thing with ISIS and that's going on over there and they're actually fighting and trying to take over the city right now that I was in in 2008, 9, 2009. And it's just Kirkuk. Like back then in Iraq in 2009 was kind of like like slow down and boring. So not a lot of stuff was going on. That's why when I went to Afghanistan, it was like a total eye opener. It was like, holy shit, this is what war's really like. But when, when, when I was in Iraq, there was like one time, the only one time that I almost died. That, that was it. And I got so lucky, absurdly lucky. Like, you guys have no clue how lucky I got. And which is funny because the guy that was in the truck with me at that time is now married to my sister. But I'm sure he hasn't told her this story. Like we've got, we got so, so absurdly lucky. Uh, they used to have these hand grenades over there. They're shaped, they're RKGs. Like, I, I don't know how to, sh they're like a hand grenade. They're long, they're like this long. And they got a parachute on them. So when they throw them, the parachute comes out and it's got a shape charge. So it hits you and it's supposed to basically make, it'll melt through tanks and everything. Like it's a, it's basically what it's for. It's a shape charge. I don't, I don't know how to explain. If you don't know what a shape charge is, don't have the time to explain it. You can just Google it. But, and it goes through everything and basically a hole this big and then it will suck an entire human through that hole. That's how powerful those things are. And that was the biggest fear over there at the time because we were driving through little, little alleyways and little whatever. Um, and we never really got shot at it. Like this was a downtrend in Iraq. So they weren't like shooting at you. They were like just blowing you up. That's all they were doing. Or hitting you with these because they were easy. Like they just step out and hit you with one and run away like pansies. So we were driving one and, and, and complacency kills you like like that. Like I, we were so complacent. We were just driving, not paying any attention. I was almost asleep in the truck for God's sakes in the back seat. It was like midnight or whatever. It was late. And, and all of a sudden I hear thunk off the back of the truck and instantly the gunner just like he like froze you know that's that's a real thing you can get froze he froze he didn't shoot the guy and the guy took off but we got out and there was a big old mark from where the RGG hit the back of our truck and see if it would if it would hit the truck the thing is like this one grenade would kill everybody in the truck easily there would have been nothing left everybody would have been dead that's just what they do they, they kill everybody and it hit the back of the truck and I get out and I remember I, and I like my heart basically went through my ass right there because I looked at it and there was an RKG on the ground and it just bounced off the side of our truck and then we couldn't figure out why it didn't go off. Well, come to find out it's got two safety pins. It's got one in the back and one in the front or one on the three quarters away up somewhere. It's got two safety pins and the jackass that threw it at us 
only pulled one of the safety pins. If he would have pulled the second safety pin, one, 110% none of us would have been here, like at all. Because the parachute deployed perfectly, everything went off, like everything went perfectly, except for that second safety pin was still in, and it just bounced off, so. Yeah, got very, I've been lucky twice like that in my life so far. But anyway, that's it for uh, this week's video for Military Monday. I know it was kind of a short little story, but that was like, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, I, I wanna, I'm being very honest, that's basically what happened. If you guys wanna do me a favor, please do me a favor. If you guys wanna support me and the channel, buy one of these shirts, it supports everything I'm doing, this whole, this whole YouTube thing. Um, yeah, other than that, I will, uh, I'll see you guys next Monday with another one of these stories. I'm trying to figure out if we should continue on with the Afghanistan ones, or maybe I should take a break from those for a couple weeks and go to like, maybe basic training stories or something of that nature. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind telling funny stories or something that's not as upbeat about me, like basically almost dying and shitting myself, but I didn't shit myself. Yeah, these stories will get a little bit more intense. Um, I've, been, I've been very, been very key. I, I think it's very key for me to leave a lot of the bloody, gory stuff out. Like as we go along, it starts getting. There's like something. There's some stuff that starts happening like later on in, in July and August that just of, of when I was over there that that I will not tell on YouTube because I got a younger audience and I want to respect. Uh, I don't think that their parents would like them to hear that kind of stuff, so I will not put it on here. Someday I may write a book or something or do something crazy that, that nature where I'll be really detailed. But in this series, we're not going to talk about bloody gory stuff. Uh, you guys, you guys, if you guys are older, you guys will get what's going on. So other than that, you know what? I'm done babbling. I'll see you guys next Monday. And uh, thanks for the support.